Hi everyone, uh, Richard Madeley of Richard and Judy fame, which was a TV, an afternoon TV show, she talked about Covent Affairs and they used to play games, it was rather popular in years gone by, but Richard Madeley was filling in for Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain yesterday, and he interviewed Gavin Williamson, the UK Defence Secretary, and asked him a question, and Gavin Williamson wouldn't answer the question. Richard Madeley did something that I have been calling on reporters, and Richard Madeley is not a reporter, but I've been calling on reporters for do, to do for years. And it was just brilliant to see. Let's watch. Do you regret using very casual Trump-esque language like shut up and go away? Please don't tell me what happened because we know what happened. Do you regret using that language? That is the question. Well, what, what was right is actually we came together with our allies and well, made it absolutely right, clear okay. to Russia. All they right, couldn't no, act okay. in the, that right. behaviour, and All I right. think in, that was the right, right. thing to Interview do. Interview terminated because you won't answer the question. Good luck with the, the African Elephant uh, Project. That is an excellent thing to do, but um, it would be helpful if you answered a straight question with a straight answer. And that's how it's done. Why is it so difficult for reporters to understand this? When you're, talking to, when you're interviewing a politician like that, look at his smug face. Oh. When you're interviewing a politician and they refuse to answer a question, or they answer a different question, or they change the subject. What you do is you answer, you ask the question over and over and over again, and then if they carry on doing it, you terminate the interview. It makes them look stupid. It makes them look, it, it causes them immense embarrassment, and it's fantastic when it happens. But the thing is, it doesn't happen enough. Watch Jeremy Paxman. In his interview with Michael Howard, this is going back some time now, but Jeremy Paxman was a master at this. Take a look. I was entitled to express my views. I was entitled to be consulted. Did you threaten to overrule I, I was not entitled to instruct Derek Lewis, and I did not instruct him. And did the you truth threaten of, to overrule the, him? The truth of the matter is that Mr. Marriott was not suspended. Did you I threaten did not, to overrule him? I did not overrule Derek did Lewis. Did you threaten to overrule him? I took advice on what I could or could not did do, you threaten and to I overrule acted him, Mr. scrupulously Howard? in accordance with that advice. I did not overrule Derek Lewis. Did you Lewis. threaten to overrule him? Mr. Marriott him? was not suspended. Did you uh, threaten to overrule him? I have accounted for my decision to dismiss Derek Lewis Did you threaten to overrule him? detail before the House of Commons. I note you're not answering the question whether you threatened well, to the, overrule him. The, the important aspect of this, which it's very clear to bear in mind... I'm sorry, I'm going to be frightfully this. rude, but... Yes, you but can... I, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's you, a quite you can straight put, yes or no question, and I will, I will, give, yes you, no I will give you an Did answer. Did you threaten to overrule him? I discussed this matter with Derek Lewis. I gave him the benefit of my opinion. I gave him the benefit of my opinion in strong language. But I did not instruct him because I was not uh, entitled to instruct him. I was entitled to express my opinion, and that is what I did. With respect, that is not answering the question of whether you threatened to overrule him. It's dealing with the relevant point, which is what I was entitled to do and what I was not entitled to do. And I have dealt with this in detail before the House of Commons and before the Select Committee. But with respect, you haven't asked the question whether you threatened to overrule him. Well, you see, the question is what was I entitled to do and what was I not entitled to do? Twelve times. Just in case you weren't counting, twelve times. <laughs> yes, that's the same question. That's gone down in folklore in the UK and probably around the world as well on how to interview a politician. If you, if you just keep asking the question over and over again, the answer becomes apparent. And if they keep doing it, then you end the interview because then it makes them look stupid. But they won't do it. The journalists in this country and around the world won't do it. Paxman was a master at it. He used to do it all the time. He used to do it with... I think he did it two or three times with Boris Johnson and other politicians as well. That's why we liked him. He was a horrible person, I think, anyway. But I thought he was a brilliant presenter and a brilliant journalist because he, he would do his job. That's what a journalist's job is. There are other reporters that do it, not many. Jordan Chariton's one. That's why I like him. That's why I like him. He does it. He did it with Donna Brazil. He just kept asking the question over and over. And Donna Brazil got so flustered, she ended up trying to make out that the guy was sexist. This is how 
to interview a politician. Now, every journalist, a journalist out there and every reporter knows this. Every one of them. And the fact they don't do it just shows how spineless they are and how gutless they are and how much of a coward they are that they are so scared at losing access or losing their job, they won't actually do their job. Here's Kathy, Kathy Newman, what she said about it. So tempted to do this with other politicians on so many occasions. Well, why don't you, Kathy? Why don't you? Because you're gutless, that's why. You won't do your job. You won't do what your job actually entails because you're scared that you'll lose it. That's not a journalist. You'll, she'll do it with Jordan Peterson. She'll attack him over and over and get destroyed in the process. But she won't do it with a politician. She's too scared that somebody high up in the government or one of the elites will send an email to her boss and she'll be gone. They're not reporters anymore in this country. The stenographers. Look at look at what's happened to Newsnight since Jeremy Paxman has left. Just it's become just a it's a farce. And journalism has got so bad in this country now. I am highlighting Richard Madeley as an example of how journalism and reporting and an interview should be done. That's how bad things are now. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and please click the bell down there so you get a notification of when I drop further videos. Otherwise, YouTube will hide the video from you. Yes, they have admitted that they do that. Also, we're facing an absolute onslaught in independent media from the establishment at the moment, including YouTube. I don't make any money from YouTube whatsoever. I rely totally on the audience for me to continue doing this. So if you can afford to send me $2, $3, $5, whatever it is that you can afford through Patreon, again, the link is down there, I will be eternally grateful and it'll allow me to keep giving you the truth and cut through the propaganda and the BS that we get from the corporate and establishment media. If you can't afford to do it, please share the video as widely wide as you can. Talk to your friends and family about the issues that I and other channels on YouTube who are independent raise. Thanks very much for your support. We have to fight back against this. Till next time, peace and take care.